Wife used to love me for being me. But after her big promotion, she started wanting luxury and calling me a poor idiot. Now she's handed me divorce papers and says she deserves better. I never thought I'd be the one writing here, but I need to get this off my chest and maybe get some advice from people who've been through similar things. This is a long story, so bear with me. I've been married to Ella for 10 years. We met in college, and it was one of those quick connections. One day we were talking about the stars in the sky and the next day we were going on our first date. I was a simple guy with big dreams but no definite plans for what I wanted to do in the future. But I knew that I didn't want to be a loser. Ella, on the other hand, was always ambitious. She was studying business, always had a clear path in mind, and seemed to have her entire future mapped out. Despite our differences, we clicked. She loved my easygoing nature and my ability to find joy in the little things. We balanced each other out perfectly. I didn't need to go out of my way to impress her or bring costly gifts to keep her smiling. I'd give her a rose and she'd keep it safe until the petals fall off. Sometimes, even after that. After graduation, I took a job as a middle school teacher. It wasn't high paying, but I loved it. I enjoyed working with kids, and it gave me a sense of joy. I felt that teaching the young ones every day was a different kind of thrill and adventure. There is so much to learn from them. Ella started working for a big corporation, quickly climbing the corporate ladder. She always supported my career choice, or at least I thought she did. She often told me how much she appreciated my passion for teaching and how it made her feel secure to know that I was making a difference in young lives. She was my inspiration. If she sets a goal, she doesn't rest until she achieves it. For the first few years, things were great. We lived in a small apartment, saved money where we could, and made the most of our time together. We didn't have much, but we had each other, and that seemed to be enough. We would spend our weekends hiking, cooking together, or just lying on the couch with a good book or watching a movie. Life was simple and beautiful. As Ella's career began to take off, I couldn't have been prouder. Seeing her hard work and dedication pay off was a very happy feeling for me. I remember the day she got her first big promotion. I came back from school and sat down with a bowl of popcorn when she burst through the door, her face lit up with excitement. She'd been promoted to a management position at her company, and it came with a very good raise. We celebrated that night by turning the TV volume up, dancing to Lady Gaga and downing the vodka she bought on her way back home. We were so drunk that we couldn't find the way to our bedroom and slept on the carpet in the living room. The next day, our head was aching but the happiness of her achievement brought a smile to our faces. I even planned a date for us that weekend. We packed a picnic basket with homemade sandwiches, fresh fruit, and a bottle of her favorite wine. We drove out to a nearby park, a beautiful place with wide open spaces, tall trees, and a lake. We found a quiet spot under a large oak tree, spread out a blanket, and settled down for our picnic. We spoke about the day we met, our first date, and how far we have come. We spoke about our family, my future plans, and the kids at my school. I also wanted to mention to her that we must think about children of our own but I stopped myself. It's her moment. I didn't want to bring up the topic of a family when I was not sure if she was ready for it yet. That day was perfect. It was simple, cost almost nothing, and yet it was filled with genuine happiness. Ella seemed to enjoy it too. She told me how much she appreciated the effort I put into planning our day and how it reminded her of why she fell in love with me. But things started to change. About a year ago, Ella came back home and told me that her colleague was going on vacation to a very costly holiday destination. I nodded and went back to giving my students scores on their assessment papers. She asked if we could also go on vacation and I said yes. Why not, right? We booked our tickets and stays. She paid for all of it. I thought I'd spend on our food and other expenses during the trip. But, I was very shocked by the kind of things she wanted. Because it was so unlike her. She wished to dine in very costly restaurants, hire an expensive car to go sightseeing, party every night in clubs, book luxury massages and spas. I paid for everything. A lady deserves the best holiday. If my wife wants it, I give it to her. It was a one-time thing anyway. When we got back from our vacation, Ella was the happiest I had ever seen her. She was very joyful for almost a month after that. But then, she came to me and asked to go on another vacation. Firstly, I won't get a leave of absence at such short notice. I was gone for a week only a month ago. Also, I didn't have enough money to fund the trip. She wanted to go to Paris. That's very far away and I also had to think about my students' examinations. I had to complete teaching them the syllabus before the deadline. I respectfully told her that we should plan it some other time. She didn't argue and let it go. But as time went on, things began to change. Ella's desire for a better lifestyle grew. She started talking about moving to an even bigger apartment and buying home decor items that we did not need. She suddenly wanted a walk-in wardrobe. She started spending her money on expensive shoes and I also gave her money to buy these satin sheets that were too overpriced. I couldn't help but feel a growing disconnect. I say so because she no longer wanted to go on simple dates. We stopped our picnics, no longer had burgers at a food joint that we loved because someone told her it was very unhygienic and cheap. She didn't buy wine anymore and shifted to champagne. 
We did not cook together in the kitchen and ordered takeaway. She started sitting by her computer and having meals, always texting these new friends that I had never heard about. I thought it was a phase. But, I felt very bad that we were not spending enough time with each other. One day, I asked her if she would go out with me. I wanted to go to this Asian food place that sold the best ramen and kimchi. I am a fan of the food. She immediately said no and argued that these places were not to her liking anymore and that I should stop visiting such lowly places. I told her there is nothing lowly about food. She added that I often started conversing with the waiters or restaurant owners there and it was very embarrassing to her. She never felt embarrassed before. In fact, she'd join in the conversations and laugh around with them. I did not argue and asked her if she wanted to go somewhere else then. She said that there was an office party that weekend and I should attend it with her. I agreed. But that night, we stayed in silence and said nothing to each other. Suddenly, we were attending high-end social events, networking parties, and dinners at expensive restaurants. Ella is a totally different person in these places. She's always engaging and charming, but I often felt out of place. I miss the simplicity of our old life, the ease and comfort of just being ourselves. I miss the road trips, the camping under the stars, and the fun exploration of local attractions. We hardly spoke about things that we loved. All she was interested in was that branded bag that her boss bought, the necklace her colleague's husband gifted her or how these kids of her friend were going to school with very high fees. During one of our conversations, she said that I should start thinking about my life and do something about it. In my opinion, I was doing just fine. I am happy where I am. When I said the same to her, she said if the kids were paying such high fees in those schools, the teachers would be paid well too. I should consider working in such places. I am very attached to my present workplace. I love my colleagues, the kids, the atmosphere and I will never trade it for anything else. I received my share of promotions while I am at it, though they are very different from hers. I told her I didn't plan to change and she lost her temper. We got into a very heated argument. That's when she said, I did not marry you to remain a poor idiot. She said that we had the means to do so much more, to live better. Why wouldn't I want that? Yes, I would want to live better. I want to earn more money and show the world to her. But lately, all she cared about was money and the temporary happiness that it offers. I wished to grow in my career to be successful in content. She wanted to do it to fill her bank balance and spend it as if she had no care in the world. After the promotion, she started spending time with a crowd that was nothing but showy. They do not understand the beauty of small joys in life. I tried to tell her that, but she became very defensive and said that I cannot achieve anything in my life because I am not ready to leave my poor victim mentality behind. She asked me not to control her. I let it go. I was merely suggesting. I never thought I was poor or that I was a victim. I don't know why she even said that. I struggled to explain that my contentment wasn't about settling for less but about finding joy in what we had. I loved our simple life, our home-cooked meals, our quiet nights in. Yes, I want to go out to eat in restaurants, I want to travel the world with her and I want to gift her anything that she wants. But, my life shouldn't revolve around these things only. They are not the memories that we'll remember when we are 90. I didn't need luxury to be happy. But Ella seemed unable to understand this, and her dissatisfaction with our life grew. One night, after another fight, I decided to plan another simple date. I thought she'd feel better and things between us will finally seem normal. I suggested we have a movie night at home, just the two of us. I cooked her favorite dinner, set up the living room with cozy blankets and pillows, and picked out a few of our favorite movies from college. For a moment, it seemed to work. Ella relaxed, and we enjoyed the evening together, laughing and playing board games. But as soon as the night was over, reality came crashing back. The next day, she was back to the usual, complaining about the things we didn't have and the life she felt we were missing out on. I made the mistake of mentioning that I was looking forward to starting a family and we shouldn't fight with each other the way we were. She laughed at my face and said that I could never afford children. I should just be happy with the ones I see at school. I thought she'd set it out of anger and would apologize to me later. But, she never did. And, I never asked. I let it go. It became clear that our lives were moving in different directions. Ella's career was her priority, and she was driven by the desire for more, more money, more status, more luxury. My priorities hadn't changed. I still found joy in the simple things and in the fulfillment my job brought me. I don't want to run behind money for the reasons that she wants to. I tried to support Ella and her ambitions, but it felt like no matter what I did, it was never enough. She wanted me to be more, to want more, but I couldn't change who I was. She wanted me to ditch t-shirts for suits, shirts for tuxedos, and Crocs for shiny shoes and I did not want any of that. The love that once brought us together now seemed to be the very thing driving us apart. I started questioning myself. Maybe she was right. Maybe I was being selfish by sticking to my low-paying job, by not striving for more. I considered going back to school, trying to find a higher-paying job, anything to make her happy. I wanted to tell her the same thing once I got back home. But then I heard her speaking with her sister on the phone. She told her that she made a mistake marrying someone like me who enjoyed being poor. 
I liked lending money to everyone and treated her like she were a beggar. She has no freedom in the house and feels like a maid every day. She can't even bring a bottle of champagne to the house without me looking at her like she doesn't deserve it. Compared to the husbands of her other colleagues, I was a loser who knew nothing about my life. She also said that I had always been irresponsible in life and her love made her very blind to these flaws. She made a huge mistake settling with someone who could never earn good money. She also said how her sister's husband was way better than me and I should learn a thing or two from him. She laughed at how I asked her for kids. She told her sister that her kids could never have a father like me who'd struggle to get them their favorite toys. She made me sound like someone who had zero bank balance. A loser with no purpose. An idiot who knew nothing about keeping a family together. When she saw me, she quickly hung up, but the damage was done. I felt like I'd been punched in the gut. That night, I told her I couldn't take it anymore. I asked her if she still loved me, or if she loved the idea of what I could be. She didn't answer right away, and the silence was in itself an answer. Finally, she said, I do love you, but I hate our life. I want more, and I thought you did too. I told her that I loved our life, or at least the life we used to have. I asked her if she could still love me if I didn't change if I stayed the same easygoing guy she fell in love with. She didn't answer, and I knew then that our marriage was in serious trouble. We can't even look at each other anymore. If she sees me in the room, she finds somewhere else to be. If I am taking a glass of water from the kitchen, she turns around and disappears. She comes home really late and sleeps on the couch. I feel like the bad guy and it's too much for me to take. I tried to hold her hand while we were stepping out of the house yesterday and she quickly pulled away with a disgusted face. I don't know what I did to earn such a response from her. So, here's what I think. I am planning to tell her that we should take a break and think about where our relationship is heading. Will that be too harsh on her? Well, right now, everything is harsh on me. It is very difficult to see the love of my life treat me like a pest or something. What do you think I must be doing? Update 1. First off, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who offered their love and support after my last post. I appreciate every single comment and message. I've been reading through them, and it's helped me feel less alone during this incredibly difficult time. I wanted to give you all an update on what's been happening since then. We decided to take a break. She moved in with her sister, and I stayed in our apartment. The silence that followed was both a relief and a torture. On one hand, I missed her terribly, the woman I fell in love with. On the other hand, I didn't miss the constant insults and taunts about my job, and my lifestyle. During this break, I had a lot of time to think about my life choices. I reflected on why I chose to become a teacher in the first place, and I reaffirmed my love for the profession. I realized that while I wanted to support Ella and make her happy, I couldn't change who I was. Doing so would mean cheating myself and giving up a part of me. That being said, I also understood that compromise is part of any relationship. So, I started looking into opportunities that would allow me to advance in my career. I found a position at a better school, one that offers more responsibilities and the chance to make a broader impact. The pay wouldn't be much different, but the role excited me. I felt it would be a positive step forward and something that could potentially address some of Ella's concerns without forcing me to completely be the person I am not. I was ready to go tell Ella about my decision after our two-month break. I thought that perhaps this compromise might be a way to bridge the gap between us. But before I could reach out to her, she showed up at our apartment with divorce papers. She explained that she couldn't be with a man who couldn't fulfill her desires and wishes. She told me she felt like I couldn't achieve anything in life and that she deserved more than what I could offer. She mentioned her social circles and how they would frown upon a person like me. She didn't want her partner to be someone she wasn't proud of, and in her eyes, that's what I had become. I realized that no matter what I did, it might never be enough to satisfy her desire for more. I took the divorce papers and told her I needed time to think about it. I wasn't ready to make any decisions on the spot. After she left, I sat down and thought about our entire relationship, from the early days of our love to the recent years of growing apart. It was clear that we had both changed, and while I still loved her deeply, I couldn't ignore the fact that we were no longer compatible. She was here two days ago. I plan on discussing things with my parents and then let her know about my decision. Now, her thoughts seem more like an insult to me than anything else. Some would even call it toxic. I will come back with an update soon. Thank you so much, everyone. Update 2. Hey Reddit. I am extremely sorry. I totally forgot to tell you what's happening with me. There were so many disturbances that I hardly had time to breathe. So, here's the thing, our divorce got finalized. Firstly, I want to thank each and every one of you for your unwavering support throughout this challenging time. Your messages and encouragement have truly been a lifeline for me, and I can't express how much it means to have this community behind me. After the divorce was finalized, I took some time to process everything and figure out my next steps. One of the biggest changes I made was in my career. I decided to take a leap and change jobs to pursue a position at a better school. I chased opportunities instead of money and it's the best decision I made. It feels like I've left my comfort zone and the result is even better. On a more personal note, I also made a furry addition to my life, Snooper, my German Shepherd companion. 
Getting a dog has been such a joy. Snooper is always eager to go on adventures with me. He makes me feel less alone and I look forward to coming back to my house so that I can spend time with him. I've also been considering counseling. I kind of understand the importance of professional support in processing everything I've been through. My friends and family have been incredibly supportive of this decision and they also encouraged me to work on mental health first. A sound mind means a sound body, this was what my mother told me. I thought they'd be shocked that I was planning to go to a shrink but no one batted an eyelash. I was the one overthinking for no reason. Regarding the divorce, Ella and I no longer have any contact. After the divorce was finalized, she came by to collect her belongings and completely removed her presence from our shared space. I am being honest, she didn't even leave a tissue behind. I didn't say a word to her or her sister while they packed her things and left. I have no hard feelings against her. She will always remain one of my most beautiful memories. But, I can't say the same about her. While Ella was packing her things, her sister came to me and whispered in my ear that Ella hated me more than anything else and that the biggest mistake of her life was to marry me. I smiled and said nothing. There's nothing to say, is there? I'm focusing on healing and moving forward. I tried calling her a few times in the beginning, just to ask how she was doing. Her answers were short and irritated. Then, I understood that my presence in her life was not welcome, not even for phone calls. I quit calling her. She blocked my number after a few days. I learned from mutual friends that she was seeing someone from her office. I am really happy for her. She deserves all the happiness in the world. My mother wants me to start dating again. But I think it's too soon. She introduced me to this really nice girl from her cooking classes. She is an athlete. Her name is Mia. Yes, I liked her company but I must see how things will turn out. I don't want to rush into anything now. Once again, thank you so much for all your love and support. I am doing great and will continue to focus on myself, better myself and achieve the best things in life. Lots of love and joy to all of you.